The Beatitudes, they are simply the attitudes of Christians. Because the Beatitudes start with the be someone. Be a person with an attitude. That's what I will make this uh, combination of words. Be an attitude that forms the Beatitude. The attitude of being someone. You are someone. What are you? If you call yourself Christian, if you call yourself Son of God, if you call yourself follower of Jesus, follower of Christ, then you have to live according to what you call yourself. But if you call yourself a church member, if you call yourself a, a, a religious person, then that's what you are going to perform. If you are just a religious person, then it doesn't matter you are Christian, Catholic, Mormon, Jehovah Witness, Muslim, Buddhist, or whatever. Because you are just following a religion. You are just pleased with the kind of moral or the tradition or the custom that a group of people have in this world. And you will be satisfied about that. And you will be, according to your terms, happy. Then if you are just a church member, you are called a church member, then you will be happy just to participate in everything that the church does. You're going to feel that you are happy just to be involved in church activities. Come to church, you freely and gratefully give your, your, your tithes, your donations, your thanksgiving for what you have received from church, for what you have in church. And then you will be happy because you are a church member. But being a Christian, being a child of God, being a follower of Christ is a different thing. Are you happy for being a Christian? Are you happy for being a follower of Christ? Are you happy for being a child of God? That's another story. What we understand for being a child of God? What we understand for being a follower of Jesus? What, what we understand for being a Christian? What is our attitude of being children of God? We are doing the, and we are showing the Beatitudes because it's the right thing. Because it's the right thing. Because it's God's will. And we are following the Beatitudes in righteousness. Now, as we see the scripture again, from this chapter 5 of Mark, Matthew, we see that, yes, we are all here to be like Jesus. To be like him in an attitude that Jesus showed us and teaches us to have. Once again, the Beatitudes is just a combination of be like Jesus with the right attitude. The attitude of Jesus. The character of Jesus. So we are starting by seeking God, seeking faith. And this faith is seeking to like being poor in the spirit. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. We are happy just for seeking God, just for having a, a, a privilege to have an encounter with God. If you come to church, it's because I believe you have the heart to seek God today and his presence and his spirit. Then we as we meet God. Definitely the, the first symptom, the first actions, the first response that we have as we, by faith, believe that God is with us, is repenting. If you say that you have a life, an encounter with God, and you never repent from your sins, you probably never meet God in your life. If you don't have a heart to repent and mourn for your sins, you don't yet have meet the God who is spirit and truth. He said in his word, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And after you repent for your sins, and you know that, yes, it's by His grace that we live, and it's by His grace that we are here, then you will be naturally able, and we, you will ask, ask God to use you, to use your life. And you will naturally submit and surrender everything to Jesus, because you want to obey Him. You want to let your life be used by God. And even you have a strong will before to meet Jesus, to live in your own way or to live against God's will, now you have a meek attitude to surrender all to Jesus, to surrender all to God's will, and to obey whatever God says. Then you will continue in your spiritual growing, searching for more of God. He said in his word, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. If you are looking for God, thirsty for God, hungry for God, you will be filled. 
And I pray that every one of you can experience once in your life the filling of the Holy Spirit. But you cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit if you are not first baptized by the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit in order to experience the feelings of the Holy Spirit every day. The baptism of the Holy Spirit happens only once. But the feelings of the Holy Spirit happen every day of your life. If you don't have the first one, you cannot have the second one. You have to be hungry, thirsty of God's Spirit. Why? Because we are living in a spiritual life. Christian life is not a life of flesh. It's not a life of materialism. If you are Christian because you want to have something from God materially, or, in other words, you want to have a successful life in terms of being rich, being comfortable, have everything that you need in your life, then you are just pursuing a religious perspective of Christianity. But you are not really focused on what God wants you to give, to, to wants to give to you. That is His Spirit. But if you are thirsty and hungry of His Spirit, that's another thing. You can be poor, you can be homeless, you can be without any reason to pursue nothing material in this world for tomorrow because you know that God supplies all your needs. And you don't worry about tomorrow and you are not anxious about tomorrow because you are living today like this is the last day of your life. What happens if you live today like it will be the last day of your life? Are you able and ready to die today, tonight? I mean, are, are you filled with the Holy Spirit today? I pray that after this sermon you all will be filled with the Holy Spirit because we don't know when we're going to die. Especially this day, many people are traveling because of vacation during, during the, 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 the summer season in Korea. And accidents and accidents we see in the news every day. And, and we don't know who will be the next one. We don't know if we are going to be the next one. So we must be ready to live this day that will be the last day of your life. Of course, we have dreams, we have plans for tomorrow, but if you don't prioritize that the first thing that you need for today is the Spirit of God, and the last thing that you need for today is the Spirit of God, then you are wasting your day. You are wasting your time. Evaluate yourself every night before you go to sleep if you have experienced the fullness of God, the fullness of His Spirit. If you did that, then you will grow in faith. And, and, and pursue sanctification, holiness in your life. Jesus says in his word, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now if you have been poor in the spirit, if you have been showing that you are repenting of your sins, and that you are surrendered your life to Jesus, and you're pursuing God's spirit and, and, and fill it with him every day, then you will be like Jesus. As you have received mercy when you were pure in the spirit, you will give mercy now to others. You will be ready to, to demonstrate to others that they receive. They need to receive the mercy of God. They need to receive the grace of God. And you're going to prepare yourself for testifying about God's gospel, good news, that is mercy and His grace. You are doing that, definitely you need training. You need to prepare yourself. If you want to testify about Jesus, you need to prepare by diligently studying the scriptures, diligently praying, diligently have communion with God. But having communion with God requires to give away your worldly life, to put your eyes focused on Jesus, rather than to put your eyes on the sins of this world. Surely you will see God first rather than other sins. Blessed are the pure in heart, say Jesus, for they will see God. Now you will see God in every person's life. You will see God in all circumstances of your life. You will see God before you start your day. Our prayer should be, Lord, open my eyes to see your will today and who I should testify today of your grace and mercy. That's the preparation of our heart before we share the gospel. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called a son of God. If you are in contact with holiness, you are experiencing sanctification in your life, and you see God in every aspect of your life, definitely you cannot be quiet and stop your mouth to tell the world that there is a way to be reconciled with God. And you will, 
be in the ministry of reconciliation, to put peace between people and God. You will be an intermediate, an intercessor for people and God. Why? Because God wants to use us as His church, as His people, to extend the kingdom of God here in planet Earth, here in the universe. But then, that's brought us to the last declaration of Jesus. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is a very controversial statement. Blessed are those who are persecuted. In other words, happy are those who are persecuted. In the words of one famous theologian, Martin Lloyd-Jones, he says in his book, in his study of the Beatitudes, that Christians have characteristics to show to the world. The Christian person, he is persecuted because he is a certain kind of person and because he is behaves in a certain manner. We are a certain kind of person. And we are persecuted because we behave in a certain way. Once again, if you are a child of God, if you are calling yourself a follower of Christ, a Christian, your attitude, the way you live, will be different than others. We will, in, a, in some way, different that people will notice. You will be a peacemaker. You will be a person who looking for purity, a person who always gives sense to God for grace in your life. That will make the difference between you and the normal people. And that will cause you to be in the eyes of everybody. You will be the target of everybody. Of everybody who are not righteous. Now, as Martin Joyce, John said in his book, many people misunderstand this declaration of Jesus, that we are persecuted because of what we are looking for, what we try to promote, or because we are persecuted of, for righteous sake. We are not told, blessed are the persecutors because we are fanatical, because we are Jesus fan. Okay? We are not Jesus fan. We are not fanatical people. We are not crazy people. We believe God with reason. We believe God with all our heart. We believe God because, yes, God loves us. Because God poured His grace and mercy on all of us. It does not mean that we are blessed, or blessed are those who are persecuted for a cause. Because you can have a cause for living, and doesn't mean that you're, because you're persecuted for your cause, you're doing the right thing. You are righteous. You can be persecuted for a cause and you are not blessed because of that. You are not happy because of that. We must re realize that it does not mean, this verse does not mean that suffering persecution for a religious political reason is a reason for living. In other words, sometimes we think that yes, we try to push to this war our religion agenda. And history proved that every time the Christianity, they tried to take an advance in the war or using politics as a platform for preaching the gospel, instead to gain souls to Christ, we are losing many souls to Christ. We are losing many Christians in this war. And we became the reason for anger Heather, in this war. Proof will show us what happened with Muslims when the Crusades, they went to the corners of this world to push Christianity to people who were not ready to receive Christ. And they became now the enemies of Christianity. And that's the reason that they are killing every missionary today in the world, as we just saw in this video, because they are called a Christian. Why? Because they have this damage from the past. We are not pursuing a cause. We are no fanatic, we are no political religion motive people to try to live righteousness. One of the other negatives view that we have for people who misunderstand this verse, as Martin Joy said, this beatitude doesn't know even say blessed are they that are persecuting for being good 
or novel or self-sacrificing. We are not persecuted because we are doing good. Actually, this war, they don't persecute people because they are good. They don't persecute people because they are novel. They don't persecute people for, because they are self-sacrificing. Actually, they worship these people. They like these people. You see the difference that, yes, in, even in one Muslim country, you see that there are Christians who are persecuted and killed, like in China. But there are other Christians that are untouchable. They, they freely preach the gospel. They freely evangelize. They freely worship God in these countries. What is the difference between one another? Because people see in their goodness, novel, and self-sacrifice. So they like this kind of people. They try to imitate this kind of people. But this verse, we are not, that Jesus said, we are not persecuted because we are novel, we are good, or we are self-sacrificing. We are persecuted because of righteousness. And if we, if we are doing righteousness and showing righteousness, showing the virtues of the kingdom of heaven, definitely we're going to be persecuted. Definitely we will be a target for this world. People, they love the good people. They like good people. They like noble people. They give it a prize. They call it the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize for peace, Nobel Prize for everything. They like people, Christians and not Christians, who are noble, who are good, who are self-sacrifice. But they don't like those who are pursuing righteousness. We are in this world to do the right thing by seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seek for the kingdom of God and His righteousness and God will give you everything that you need, says the word. We don't need to be worried. We don't need to, to, to be ashamed because God already, He declare that if you are persecuted because of righteousness, you are very happy. You are blessed. Why we are the righteous persecuted? First, because we are different. We are different because we are bearing in our hearts the virtue of the kingdom of heaven. Why we bear the virtues of the kingdom of heaven? Because we know that everything that we have is temporarily. And our eyes are no in the temporary sins, but we are putting our eyes in the sins that are eternal. What is eternal? Truth is eternal. In this world that said that there is no absolutely truth, that in this world there is no absolutely righteousness, that everything is just relative, if you said that there is one truth and you speak with the virtue of truth, you're going to be persecuted. If you defend the truth, you're going to be persecuted. You won't be persecuted because you're good, because you're noble, because you're self sacrificed but because you defend the truth, then you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be radicalized because people will say, yes, there is no absolute truth. There is no truth at all in this world. But you say, yes, there is truth. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one's come to the Father except through you. Then you're going to be persecuted. No, 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 the people will say. There are many ways to go to heaven. There are many ways to go to God. Religious present all these ways, and all these ways are good, noble, and self-sacrifice. People will like that. But if you pursue righteousness, you will say, no, there's only one way and one way alone. Then you're going to be persecuted. You will defend the truth. You're going to defend the life that is eternal in Jesus alone. And you're going to be persecuted because you will defend there's only one way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the only one who can give us eternal life. And because of that reason, you're going to be persecuted. And then, if you are persecuted because of that, you are a very happy person. You are not persecuted because you are good. You are not persecuted because you are noble. You are not persecuted because you are self-sacrificed. You are persecuted because you are defended the truth. You are defended the life that Jesus gave away for all of us. His sacrifice on the cross was, was just insignificant. It was the most gracious, noble, and pure sacrifice that ever history can experience in their life. And no one was putting his life like Jesus put it for all of us because he was holy. He was tempted by everything, but he remained without sin for all of us. So we sinners can depend on his sacrifice. He's a ton of sacrifice and we can declare it holy. We can receive mercy. We can be purified and we can be happy because of Jesus' death on the cross. 
and you defend his life, and you defend his sacrifice on the cross, and you defend the new life that he gave you after he resurrected from the dead, and that is very true, 100% true, then you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted because you are a good Christian, because you come to church every Sunday, because you are self-sacrificed, and you do the all good sins that you can show to this world. They're going to clap, clap to you, and they're going to pray to you, and they're going to give you sense. But if you are to defend the truth, because the first virtue of the kingdom of heaven is the virtue of truth, definitely you're going to be persecuted. They want to call it you intolerant. And many of you who are here, middle and high school students, be ready. Because as soon as you get to college, that the first thing that you're going to be exposed, they're going to present you a lie, and you have to present the truth. Which one you're going to choose? And if you are not ready to defend the truth, you're going to periodically give away this truth and start to accept this lie. But if you stand up for the truth, then you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be a target for this world. But don't worry. God will be with you. The Holy Spirit will fill you with His words. And it will not you who will speak, says the Lord. It will be the Spirit who will speak through you. But of course, we need training. If we are not ready to defend righteousness, then we're going to just fall down in the category of a church member and a religious member. But no, a child of God. No, a follower of Christ. No, a real Christian. We are not here to play Christianity. We are not here to pretend we are Christian. We are not here to just enjoy our life as we think that is the happy life. Actually, the gospel, the Bible said that if you are persecuted for righteousness, be happy. If your job, Peter said, if you are persecuted for doing good, then don't be surprised. Don't be surprised that they persecute you because you're doing good. Because you're doing the right thing. And Apostle Paul will say to, 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 the, to Timothy that those who want to follow Christ, they're going to be persecuted. So welcome to Christianity. Welcome to the kingdom of God. That's why we need more people who want to become soldiers of Christ. Not to fight against the people, not to antagonize for a cause. Because many people think, oh, we are following a cause and, 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 and that's why we are persecuted. No, 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 no. They are misunderstanding the gospel. We are persecuting because we are defending the truth. Because we are defending the life that Jesus gave for all of us. And we are defending the new life that we have in Jesus. Eternal life. Because one thing is, is, is true. After this life, you're going to spend in one of these two places. In the eternal kingdom of heaven or in the eternal fire of hell. It's your choice. Which one you want to be? It's your choice to be a real Christian or be a fake Christian. To be a Christian who lives truly and by the truth or who be a Christian who wants to live in a fantasy, in a dream. And that's what Satan wants us to be. Just stay in your comfort zone, brother, sister. Everything's alright. God knows you. He knows your weakness. Don't worry. No challenges. No problem. God understands you. That's a lie. If you have that kind of voices in your, in your mind, definitely it's not God. Because I would say, stand fear in the truth. Be ready to present a reason for your faith. But do this with courtesy. We do this with humbleness. We, this, we do this with gentleness. So we are not against this war or, or be angry of this war and we try to prove that we are brave than them. Or stronger than them. No, 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 no. That's a wrong concept of Christianity. And many missionaries fall in, this, in, in their mission because they are antagonized against the culture, against the, the religious spirit of, of those countries, and they don't present the gospel as should be presented. God says, if you are ready to defend the reason of your faith, then God will provide a way to gain those souls. And it is not you who will do the work. It is the Spirit of God. Because it's the Holy Spirit who has the power to convince people of righteousness 
of holiness, of justice. It is not you. You are just the instrument. You just need to humbly say, Lord, use me. Here are my hands. Here are my lips. Here are my feet. He's my life. Is it a neighbor? So be it. Is it a parent or family member? So be it. Whoever has put you in, in your way, with humble heart, just stand fear in the truth. If they accept the truth, then praise God. If they don't accept the truth, then let God convince them. It's not your job. It's the job of the Holy Spirit. And if we know that it's up to the Holy Spirit to convince the world, we just need to be happy to do our part. Our work is just to obey God, to present the gospel, to present the truth to the world. Just like that. It's not our work to convince people we are not forcing anyone, we are not using any crusade sword or armor to try to convince people to come into our culture, to come into our religion. We are just presenting the truth, the way and the life of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Not by force, not by antagonistic spirit, but with the Spirit of God, full of gentleness, full of kindness, full of peace, full of love. You have to love the world first. Not just living a cause. We are not evangelized people or reaching people because we are living a cause. We are showing the love of God. If you want to present the gospel to one person because you are a Christian, definitely you're going to receive a damage. But if you are presenting the gospel because you love the sinners, you love the lost, then they will see love in you. They will see love and faith. And they want to hold your hands and walk with you and enter into the presence of God and worship Him, declaring that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of the world. Let's pray.